What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking? What's cracking, y'all? Welcome back to this episode of Amazing Plays. And Amazing Plays is a new playlist that I started out not too long ago, which I take individual plays by player or team that really stand out to me take a look at it and break it down to the best of my ability. And this one, we got a Larry Bird clutch shot. Now, this is an incredible clutch shot by Larry Bird. It's Bulls versus Celtics in Chicago. And Larry hits this uh, go-ahead game-winning shot against two of the greatest defensive players to ever play the game in a late double team um, in Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. Exceptional shot by Larry Bird. And also, this is one of my favorite broadcaster calls that I've ever heard. Bird low, bird low. You can't double team him now. Now you can. Anyway, you'll see. We'll watch it uh, once or twice and then break it down and I'll give my perspective and opinion on the play as a whole, all right? Let's check it out. Defensively. Let's see if they wind it all the way down. Inside bird of low, seconds. bird low. You can't double yet. Now you can quickly. Bird jumper. Good. Three, Jordan four, jumped seconds. so high, and Larry, Larry put that ball with a beautiful arc. The Celtics came down and executed beautifully. They ran off 13 seconds, and Bird nails the turnaround. Everybody in this building had to know it was going, and Michael came over to help out. Let's watch it one more time. Let's see if they wind it all the way down. <clears throat> You can't double yet. Now you can quickly. Bird's jumper. Good. Three points. Mm -hmm. Butter. Butter pecan. Smooth watery catch city. The Celtics came down and executed beautifully. They ran off 13 seconds, and Bird nails the turnaround. Everybody in this building had to know it was going to Michael. All right, now for the breakdown of the play. Let me first say this. Actually, let, let's get into it. Like I said, 14 seconds on the clock. They run off as much time as they needed to to get the, the basket that they wanted and execute it to perfection, which they did, which only left the Chicago Bulls with a couple seconds on the clock, all right? So you see here, like they said, we already know where this ball is likely going to. It's going to Bird. We're going to put the ball in Bird's hand and let Bird make a decision as he's an excellent playmaker and excellent uh, shooter in isolation situation, scorer in general, to be honest with you. All right, so you see here, they don't even they don't even try because you see Pippen's already matched up on him, so they don't even try to. A lot of times what you'll see players do is they'll try to create some type of switch so they'll get a different defender on them, but... Uh, I'm, I'm sure Coach wasn't worried about that, and Larry wasn't worried about that, because Larry, there was no defense for Larry. No no, no individual player could really lock Larry down, at least on a consistent basis. So here we go right here. Looks like they might do some switch action, but they really don't. Larry goes straight into a post position on Scottie Pippen there. Now, it may be kind of hard to see. It's blurry. It's old footage. But he's, he's squatting down low to, to put a pip there. You know, on the block. Now, Pippen kind of pushes him out a little bit, but also Larry kind of runs out to get the ball at the same time. It's a little bit of resistance, but not super a whole lot. But Larry maintains that post position, even though he's getting pushed out the box a little bit. Right now, I want you to pay attention to what Michael Jordan is doing. Right, Michael Jordan is right there. Now, you can see Michael Jordan is not fully man. It's not body to body with his defensive assignment, and there's a reason for that. Larry Bird creates problems, especially in clutch situations, when he gets the ball. Now, Pippen right here, honestly, I think Pippen could be a little bit more physical. Um, he's That's not a good de that's not a good defensive posture right there by Scottie Pippen. It's not at all. I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to be like, I'm not fouling, I'm not touching him hands off, but no. And a lot of times the, the, in the clutch situations, or these type of situations late in the game, they're going to let a little bit of physical play go on. But it gets back. And by him, and look, by, by Scotty not taking a strong defensive posture here, it allows him to get knocked off balance and Bird get right back low where he wants to be right there. All right, now it's kind of hard to see when the ball gets dumped into him, but yeah, I can barely see the ball. At this point, the ball is in his hand. 
Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But the ball's in his hand at this point, and Larry goes into his move. Now, watch Mike. All right, Mike. Mike's sole responsibility here is to make Larry make a, a, a tough decision by floating between Larry for a double team and Mike's man. And what I mean by that is this. Larry Bird is arguably one of the hardest, if not the hardest player in NBA history to guard, especially in clutch moments. And I'll tell you why. Larry Bird is an S-tier elite playmaker slash passer. Larry Bird is a S-tier slash elite shot maker, shooter, scorer. Okay, so there's no textbook game plan to defend Larry in these kinds of situations. If you double team him, if you double team Larry hard early, he's absolutely unequivocally 100% going to find the open man. You know Larry's going to do that. If you come with an early double team, he's absolutely going to find the open man. Also, if you stay at home, if the help defender stays at home on his assignment and you leave the defender in isolation with Larry, that's barbecue chicken, like Shaq likes to say. Barbecue chicken. Larry's going to get a good look, even if the defense plays exceptional defense. Larry's such an elite scorer and shooter that usually better offense prevails over better defense. Larry still get a good look off, or he can still get a good shot off, and it's good enough where even with great defense, he can still can the shot. So what do you do in that situation? Well, this is probably your best option. You float. Larry's looking. He's like, "Well, I see what Jordan's doing. He's either trying to, he's either trying to, uh, going to blitz me with a double team late, or he's trying to bait me into passing, which I know, even as a great shooter I am, he's ex he's expecting me to pass it with Jordan's elite athletic ability, great first step, extremely quick hands, big hands." There is a high probability that if I try to get this ball over to the open player, however, Jordan's going to intercept that pass. But I have options here, and I have to make a decision. They're not forcing me to make a decision right now. right? If Jordan stayed on its man, they'd be forcing Larry to go isolation. It makes the decision easy for, easy for Larry. If they come with an early double team, it makes the decision easy for Larry. Pass the ball. But now they're like, well, let's, let's, let, let's have Larry think about it and make a decision. And Jordan, you do not come for that double team. Don't don't go for that double team early because your man's open and Larry's going to get it to him. You wait until Larry absolutely commits. So you feel like Larry has committed to going up for the shot. Then you blitz him with the double team. And what better situation is that? We got Scottie Pippen, one of the greatest wing defenders ever. We got Michael Jordan, one of the greatest wing defenders ever. Double teaming. A late double team. On a last second shot, we like our chances. We like our chances. That is why Larry makes this, this situation so difficult because he's S tier and elite on both sides, and he's a willing passer, and he's an exceptional shooter, as opposed to somebody like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, right? We've seen Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant pass in clutch moments from time to time, but we've also seen Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant ignore open players and take on the challenge of the double team or the triple team because that's how they're wired. They accept the challenge. Oh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to get off off this double team. I'm going to show you that three people can't stop me. I'm going to show you that two people can't stop me. I'm going to still raise up and shoot the shot. Sometimes it goes in, sometimes it doesn't. But they're easier to defend a Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant because you're going to roll a dice. You're going to say there is a 70% chance that if we send an early double team at Kobe and Mike, they are not going to pass the ball. There's a 70% chance. We'll take those chances, and now we're going to do it. We're never not going to worry about a late double team. We're going to send an early double team at them because they're going to see that double team. Their eyes are going to light up. They're going to be smiling from ear to ear. It's like, yeah, baby, bring on two defenders. Let me show you how great of a tough shot maker I am. I ain't passing this ball. They're easier to defend. There's more of a textbook 
on how to guard a Kobe or Michael. Granted, they will hit a lot of those really difficult shots, and all you do is tip your hat to them. But you at least have a more ideal and solid game plan on how you want to move forward with this player. LeBron James, something closer to Larry Bird in terms of scoring slash passing, right? We've seen Larry Bird, or we've seen LeBron James be a willing passer in clutch situations. Sometimes to his detriment, people used to scrutinize him a lot for that. Why'd you pass the ball? Why'd you pass the ball? They missed a shot. LeBron, you had the mismatch. You should have just took it. Whatever. All right. But here's the difference. Le- LeBron James isn't quite as good of a passer as Larry Bird. I don't care what the numbers tell you. I'm telling you about the eye test and how LeBron monopolizes the ball more than Larry. Larry Bird is a better passer than LeBron James. Care about the numbers. Okay. Next, Larry Bird is a better scorer. I don't care about the numbers. Larry Bird is a better shooter. Don't care about the numbers. Than LeBron James. All right. So even with LeBron James in this situation, you will probably take your chances. You'll depending on who's on the floor with LeBron. If there's no heavy scoring or shooting threats, you might you might bait LeBron into making the pass and letting the guy shoot the shot. Otherwise, um, if he has a lot of uh, sharp shooters on the floor. You'll take your chances with LeBron taking a mid-range or three-point shot because, let's face it, LeBron's bread and butter is in the paint. So if you can keep LeBron James outside of the paint and force him to take a mid-range or three-point shot, you're doing good. You'll take that chance, even in a one-on-one situation. No double team. He's not Kobe. He's not Mike in the mid-range and on the jump shots. He's not. So Larry Bird, out of those guys, is arguably... The most difficult person to try to scheme for in these clutch situations because of his elite shooting, his elite scoring, and his elite passing. Sorry that went on longer than I wanted to, but let's get back into the footage. I just had to break that down so you understand the difference and why why the, the Bulls are playing him like this. And this, isn't, this is just one example of this. I've seen other Larry Bird clutch moments where other teams basically did the same thing. We're just going to blitz him with a late double team. Once we get him, once we're sure he's committing to taking a shot, or, you know, that means there's not enough time where he only has to commit to taking a shot, given the amount of time on the clock and other scenarios. So I've seen other teams playing like this, but you got to make a decision. So Larry Bird gets low. Jordan comes to the conclusion that at this point, now there's still five seconds on the clock. To me, first of all, Mike predicted correctly because Larry did commit to the shot and he went up for the shot. So good on Michael Jordan for acknowledging that because I'm looking, I was like, well, that's still five seconds. He could have still passed it to the open man if he wanted to because Mike committed so early. But good read on Mike. How he absolutely knew after Larry got into his gather that he was going to go up and not, you know, bait him into a pass, I don't know, but he called it right. So Mike is coming over. Double team. Now, here's my problem. Pippen. This is, this is, at the end of the day, even though Mike came over with a hard blitz, Pippen doesn't really pressure Larry Bird as much as he should. He should be right up on Bird. He really should be. It's too much space there. The double team could have been a lot harder than it actually was. And Michael, actually, let me get some more frames. Let me see if I get more frames in this. Zoom in on my, here we go. This is better. This is better. This is better. Okay, Mike jumps so high to contest the shot. I don't even know. Larry's fading as he should, creating space off Pippen. Now, Pippen looks like he's about to jump with Jordan, which he should have. Pippen should have jumped with Jordan to contest a shot, but Pippen doesn't. He looks like he's going to gather right here to jump, but then he doesn't. He just lets Mike jump and then turns to start rebounding. Really doesn't even do a good job at boxing out, to be honest with you. Doesn't really box out at all. He's just kind of looking. But Pippen should have came with a really, really hard. That should have been a harder double. It should have been two hands in his faces. But Mike did. That's an exceptional contest by Michael Jordan. I mean, he tried his best to get up there, and Larry, fading backwards, high, arcing shot, 
shot over his head. You know how Larry used to shoot. Beautiful, beautiful arc on the ball. That ball is going up. I see it. You can barely see it. It's blurry. But that ball right now is above the backboard. <laughs> that ball is above the backboard. And now coming down, nothing but net. Pippen, Pippen could have actually contested with Jordan, got back down on his feet, and sprinted down to the low post for a box out. Pippen could have played that a lot harder. But, but man, look at this contest still. So I'm still calling it a double team. Um, by Pippen sagging off and not finishing the play like he should have defensively, uh, it's a little bit of a weak double team, but still, still double team by two of the greatest defenders to ever play the game. But, man, I... Psh, Shout out to Jordan on that read, man. Shout out to Mike. And maybe Larry didn't pass it to him because he started because he started uh, running in and the defender was there boxing him out. It wasn't really a shot available for him versus maybe staying in the mid-range for an open shot. Maybe he would have, but I doubt it. I think Larry was definitely committed to taking a shot. Probably talking shit in the process. Probably told Pippen exactly what he was going to do. Probably told Pippen, I know Jordan is going to bless me late. I'll be waiting for it. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. But, yeah, hell of a shot by Larry, man. Hell, hell of a go-ahead game winner by Larry. Boom. Michael immediately calls timeout. Like I said, I've seen this play. I've seen this play before on Larry versus other teams, and Larry still capitalized on it. But it's one of those situations. Like, what do you do with Bird? I, 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 it's probably your best option. Just try to get him to commit and blitz with a late double team. Double team him too early. Willing passer, going to find the open guy as long as the other teammates are doing what they're supposed to do. So Larry can get the ball to him for an open shot. And you don't double team at all. He's just going to cook you. So this is probably your best option guarding a player like Larry Bird, who's who's elite shooter, score, and elite passer. Dangerous man. Dangerous man. Uh, that shot is butter. Larry knew it. He already started his. You know, when you, make, you know you're about to make the shot, you start running backwards. Larry already started running backwards. Incredible shot. Great clutch moment from Larry Legend. Yeah, that play, this play really always stood out to me. It's like, man, you got you got Pip on you. Pip, I think Pip blew the assignment a little bit. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered anyway, but still. You you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta defend a little bit harder than that, Pip. But Mike definitely, like I said, with the read, they were supposed to do Larry. Better offense prevails over better defense. And Larry Bird ices the shot, folks. That's all I got for that one. That, that's 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 my breakdown, man. Larry, exceptional shooter all over the court, can get to the basket, can score in the mid-range, as you can see, fade away, late double team, hard double team, doesn't matter, extremely high IQ basketball player, um, knows what to do in any situation, and all you can do is do your best defensively and hope for the best, you can only hope the man misses a shot, I rarely, I've rarely seen Larry Bird get his uh, shot blocked, especially on a jump shot. And he, 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 how he shoots his jumper, it's hard, man. It's it's hard to block his shot. He's already 6'10", and he comes up over his head like this, and bang, man. It's hard, man. Especially if he's going to put an arc on it like that. Psh, good luck. Good luck. Anyway, man, you guys let me know what you think about it. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. Check out our Amazing Plays playlist. Got a whole bunch of, well, I'm going to say a whole bunch. We're building a library. And uh, catch you guys on the next one. We out, baby.